Good to go? OK. Um, welcome to the talk, Scalable Clouds for Application Delivery on OpenStack. My name is Marcel Harry. I'm working at Swisscom. I'm leading the architecture for the Elastic Cloud, which we base on top of OpenStack, and the Application Cloud, which we deploy on top of it, um, which we base on Cloud Foundry. Um, this talk will mainly give you insights of how we build things, what were our lessons with it. Um, I have a background in system engineering and software development, so it's kind of like trying to bridge the two worlds. Um, I'm not the only one, so I'm part of an awesome team, and uh, we're building, like, at the moment, um, let's call it the next generation infrastructure for cloud native applications and workload. A uh, few of us are also here. Um, we can speak together afterwards. <laughs> um, <clears throat> first, briefly, something about Swisscom. Swisscom is within telecommunication, within Switzerland. <laughs> um, it does also a lot about, um, so, but Swisscom has also bigger parts about IT services and even more services all um, serving the Swiss market. Um, it has quite a huge fixed network coverage, um, probably providing for most people um, um, their broadband at home and the same goes for mobile network. Swisscom has about 20,000 employees. Um, so the market we um, deliver with, um, with mobile communication um, is a um, fiber optic broadband, traditional DSL, mobile broadband, and, and also TV coverage. So Swisscom, for example, has also um, TV offering for um, residential customers. Um, Swisscom started a um, unified approach to cloud infrastructure and services. The idea there is a little bit to build um, 360 degree cloud. Um, the idea is that um, we build a cloud that can be used by everybody. Um, Everybody means IT architects, um, end users, consuming services on top of it, or also application developers who can use um, the cloud or um, components of this 360 degree cloud to um, deploy faster applications, develop faster application, having have an environment where they can easily try things out, um, and then also have an easy step to move from like POC test um, to production. Important is we try to base things on open standards um, to avoid lock-ins. So obviously, um, OpenStack is, is one of the open standards that we think that won't provide us a lock-in. Um, such a cloud should be scalable based on the requirements that the different users have. IT architects, someone um, deploying a new platform, um, or maybe um, it's also the budget that will maybe adjust your requirements. <coughs> so to keep it simple, it should be a standardized platform um, that is used within Swisscom, but also by Swisscom customers, or serving Swisscom customers, um, and, and helping them to, to leverage their um, infrastructure. Um, when we look within that 360 degree, degree cloud, um, we have one thing that is um, called one part that is called the Elastic Cloud, including the Application Cloud, which we um, deploy on top of it. The idea there is that um, with this Application Cloud, we like to offer a platform as a service um, which eases development of new applications um, 
within Swisscom, but also for customers. Um, by reducing like the complexity of building new infrastructure and new environments, um, we think it, it will be easier to iterate on new ideas. It will be easier to try out new things. But in the end, it will also be easier um, with the time to go to market, meaning that um, we can also um, faster iterate on new products and then also being able to scale them out easily. So if you look at the requirements for, the, for a success on a platform as a service, um, people are usually referring to 12-factor um, applications. So there's a um, 12-factor manifesto which describes um, how you should build applications so that they are deployable within a platform as a service. And I mean, deploying is one thing. The other thing is scale out. So um, if you try to stick with these rules, it will also be easier to scale out. One important thing there, and this is something that a lot of people um, usually are already in trouble with it, is like a 12 factor application should completely ignore the local file system. So it should not write to it. It should not, um, it should also not um, depend on configuration data that is on that file system. So you, what you really want is, is um, are reproducible environments that um, you can just throw away, restart, and and also scale out easily. So if we have just units or um, droplets, um, which is what it's called within uh, Cloud Foundry, which is the platform as a service that we use, um, it's very easy to run these um, within containers. And it's very easy and fast to just um, run many containers. So, um, so the application should, for example, also not have any shared state. Or if it has shared state, it should um, leverage that to an external service. So a platform as a service is really something um, where you want to build tiny services. You might think about the microservice architecture. And um, one of your goals is to consume services and APIs. In the end, um, an architecture will look more or less like something like that. So we're talking about web traffic. It hits a load balancer, maybe an SSL termination. Um, and then we have a couple of um, droplet execution agents, which are just VMs that run containers. And our application runs somewhere in one or multiple containers. The load balancer um, balances the traffic towards the container. Um, if a container fails, the container will be restarted. Um, if we realize that there is too much traffic, too much load on, on one container or the existing 10 containers, we can simply scale out by telling the platform to um, start more containers. Important there is um, the services. So all the application, they will also consume external services. So as all the applications are just stateless applications, which we scale out easily within containers, um, we still might want to store like some kind of user data. Maybe someone um, signs up, makes a blog post, for example, uh, a simple application. So somewhere these blog posts should be stored. So we need to consume services. Services, this can be anything that um, provides, for example, state. Um, but it can also be more service like an email gateway, or it can be services like an API that then sends an SMS, a short message to, um, to your mobile number. 
this is more or less um, the picture how um, applications within an application cloud look like. And I'm now going over to going a little bit into detail how we build the platform that runs these kinds of applications. And as I mentioned, we built that on top of OpenStack. So we're using OpenStack um, to run Cloud Foundry on top of it. So we have like this elastic infrastructure as a service layer um, below, which we built using Quanta um, for compute nodes, Arista for the physical fabric, um, EMC Scale.io um, as our SDS solution. And then we have on top um, Red Hat OpenStack, and further as an SDN layer, PlumGrid, which integrates very nicely with it. All these things that I now um, explain, which are like our elastic infrastructure as a service, all the deployments, the configuration, the orchestration, and so on, these things are being managed using um, Puppet. So we have quite a huge um, Puppet environment, or multiple Puppet environments that manage um, the different parts. It includes also Arista switches, but it includes also the setup of, of um, PlumGrid or configuration of OpenStack Scale.io. Um, on top, we have the platform as a service layer where we are using Cloud Foundry, the open source version. Um, Swisscom is a gold member um, of um, the Cloud Foundry Foundation. We, we have also a seat in, in the board. So we're taking part of um, the development of the, de the direction in which the Cloud Foundry ecosystem and its open source project now goes. Um, nevertheless, we put some kind of, of um, also modifications or yeah, mo modifications are the wrong words, e extensions that like provide our integration with the surrounding Swisscom systems um, on top of, of um, Cloud Foundry. So we don't modify um, Cloud Foundry itself, we just um, extend it to integrate it. And for services, so we, we also need to deliver um, some kind of persistent services like relational databases, but may, maybe also message buses or um, just caches like a Redis cache. And we're at the moment we're heavily looking into um, leveraging um, Docker containers there to address um, um, these kinds of external services to Cloud Foundry. So actually, um, Cloud Foundry has its own container implementation um, called Varden or Garden, and <coughs> and where it runs the con um, the applications within. Um, and for the services, we're looking at the moment into um, using um, Docker containers for persistent services, which is something that most people don't do when they look into um, Docker. Most people look into Docker to unfortunately build more or less their own pass. And then they're again talking about stateless containers. Um, if we look at the network fabric, um, we have a very simple standard um, physical leaf spine fabric where we terminate layer three at the end of the rack. Um, this is the way how we think we should scale data center wide. Um, I guess this is in common with what most people do and where most people would agree on. Um, and then we have OpenStack on top of it and, and um, the combination of uh, between the virtual world in, in terms of what is within the workload network and within OpenStack and the external net um, connectivity flow, uh, flows through uh, the Plum Grid gateways. If we then look at um, the virtual topology that we deploy on, on top of OpenStack within, we actually do multiple tenants. We do multiple networks within these tenants. We are using features provided by PlumGrid to interconnect um, these tenants. Um, 
um, why we came up with multiple tenants are like different reasons. Like we have different provisioning orchestration systems that talk to um, the OpenStack API, so we kind of want to have some kind of isolation between them. Um, we also like to separate like application traffic into its own network within um, OpenStack, um, OpenStack network, while keeping um, control and API traffic off internal API traffic of Cloud Foundry also in their own network, um, which eases then um, managing IP table rules and so on for um, within Cloud Foundry to like add additional security features. The same thing is, is like the services, um, we, which we run in our own tenant, so we can there independently iterate on things. All the things are then uh, managed from a management tenant, um, which is accessible from our management network. All the other things are fronted by a load balancer, um, which A, balances into um, the dynamic routers of Cloud Foundry, which are the first ones within uh, the virtual network, and, and also like things like um, security features of these load balancers, um, because we then have the traffic unencrypted, and, and uh, we can um, inspect and, and uh, um, defend against different kinds of attack. Because we're running um, a pl public <coughs> platform as a service also, so this means like we can more or less, anyone can upload any kinds of application there. Um, so <coughs> what have we learned on our journey? So this journey now goes on for quite a while. Um, we, we did adjustments to our initial strategy. We did adjustments based on project requirements, on priorities, and so on. But something that, um, that is common if you're going out into a very traditional IT company and trying to um, deploy cloud native workloads is like, you also want to change the way how, um, how IT is being produced. And so the term DevOps is, is kind of like in a, a lot of people speaking about it. So the good thing is we have quite some awareness within um, the company regarding that. It's something where people are standing behind. Um, people agree on that we need to reorganize the overall process of how we produce IT. But it's like there's not a schema you can apply and say, I'm doing DevOps now. So this is more a cultural change that you need to bring into your company. And um, so this is something that we are still doing while we move on. And it's also <coughs> something that we still need to see how we, how we can validate our life cycle that we build on top of, 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 of our DevOps ideas and, and how operating a platform that is built on top of that will look like. <coughs> Other challenges, um, OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, PlumGrid, all of them are distributed systems. Distributed systems are hard. So if something fails, it's very, very hard to understand and rule them, or, or tricky to investigate. So it is very important that you understand them correctly, that you have insights into all the different components. Um, and so that you realize how they work together and, and, um, and, so, and that you can master them. Active Active, <coughs> high availability within um, OpenStack, still a big topic. Um, high availability is a topic within uh, different sessions. Not all components are so far possible to run them in an Active Active deployment. This is certainly something where we try to, to push the community more to, to have like simple high availability deployments and not things where um, we, we need to have bigger failovers. 
I introduced that at the beginning. So what is also very important if you are starting to go into an application cloud um, delivery model of, of your new applications, um, the workload that you want to deploy on, on top of such an um, on, on such an environment must change. So it will simply not work by doing shift and lift. Um, so, so you need to develop something that most people say it's like um, cloud native applications. Very important in our opinion, you need to automate everything. You need to have a very strong um, continuous integration and continuous deployment in place. Otherwise, you will just not be able to keep up with the pace how systems like that are evolving. So Cloud Foundry has its own release cycle, very frequent release cycles. OpenStack has also its very own release cycles. So do the other parts. And you need to keep that continuously integrated. Otherwise, you will just stay at Havana or Grizzly or, or wherever. <coughs> Um, when building or when operating such a distributed system, what we also learned is that it's very important to make that orchestration transparent and so also in some kind um, operatable or operational friendly in terms of that it is clear why something is orchestrated in a, in a certain way. Because if you just have a black box that just does something and you cannot understand it, it's very hard to debug in case of failure. Also, it's very good to um, involve all participants as early as possible because people might hear, we're going to have a cloud in half a year, and their expectations might be completely different from what you're building. So it's very important that you get early feedback, that you talk with them, that that you also look at their designs of the applications so that you might influence them in, in, in their architecture. Because if they, as in, for example, they build a traditional architecture, um, it will simply not be what is easy to deploy on, on such an environment. <coughs> so regarding future developments, we have at the moment, a delivery to um, um, which we're going to um, have soon. Um, this delivery um, is is like dedicated to the platform as a service on um, on top of of the Elastic Cloud. Um, we're certainly then looking into how we can leverage more features of the OpenStack ecosystem that might not be directly important for the application cloud itself, but might provide benefits for it. So for example, like database as a service or things like that, if they evolve and, and mature, um, then, then we are, will certainly look into um, getting them. Also, I mean, Cloud Foundry is like the very first um, kind of deployment that we put on top of an Elastic Stack, and Cloud Foundry is really built to be deployed on such an environment. Um, nevertheless, um, we see more workload coming that is being built to be deployed in such an, um, an environment. So this is certainly, um, we think, that will not only be um, the ground for, for the application cloud, but for more cloud-native platforms. Also, if we look at OpenStack itself, um, people are often thinking in just um, one OpenStack installation, and you deploy your platform into one OpenStack installation. And what we see more is something that we need to have an orchestration um, where we do not deploy anymore into only one OpenStack into one cloud. So we just have a honeycomb of clouds where we just orchestrate our workload into it, and we can easily move around it. To, so this gives us more resilience, but also it eases life cycle um, of, of your OpenStack clouds. And, and it also makes things um, 
like the workload um, can then be moved around depending on, on the current need. Important for that is certainly something like federated access, um, which was one of the keynotes um, content. But another thing is also that we can federate network amongst different clouds. Um, sometimes having a <coughs> having like the on just the um, traditional OpenStack approach of having a, um, floating IPs is, is like not makes it not easy to to federate network or federate workload across different clouds. So having an easy way how we can federate networks amongst different clouds will will make um, deployments much easier. This just as a small glance in, in what we think how how um, our journey will evolve. It's it's just one part, but I wanted to um, stress that out here a little bit. And um, otherwise, I'm done, nearly in time. So, are there any questions? <laughs> Could you use the microphone if you have questions? It's standing there. Or I can repeat your question, but. Yeah, question. You talked about uh, <clears throat> requirements for success, and you mentioned the stateless applications. How about stateful applications? Um, is that part of your requirements? Um, so this, this goes into the way where we also think that um, the workload must change. So you can deploy stateful applications within Cloud Foundry, but it probably has stayed for five minutes. So it, this is just the way how the environment works in that way that it constantly will kill your containers and boot them up somewhere else. So no, deploying traditional stateful containers on Cloud Foundry is not a good idea. This is not something that you want to do. You can, I mean, sure, no, one, no one's like, but, and this is also something that we see a lot of times that like people just try to, to push their existing applications to, to such an environment and then realizing later, um, hey, it's not working, like my container got killed or like I need to write configuration into the file system and now you restarted the container somewhere else and my configuration is gone. So what we then do are um, working with the developers together and also with the people looking into the infrastructure so we make workshops with them up front even maybe before they deployed something especially to, to um, introduce them to these new concepts so that they also see how how we can um, um, how we can change the existing architecture, because otherwise you will just not be successful, in my opinion. You should also not use it in the future if you have stateful. <laughs> okay. No, I serious. So, so the point I'd like to make is is really if. If you like to build cloud native applications, you need to do that separation of state and 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 push state out to consumable services. And so that your application will just be tiny applications that are spawn very fast, that can be scaled out and <coughs> scaled down again, that can be moved around. And if you and if you have state within these applications, this is not possible then you have the traditional deployment model. Um, I have two questions, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Question number one is uh, how do you handle transactional, uh, let's say, payments that require consistency across multiple sites in a stateless fashion? That's question number one. And the question number two is you mentioned open source and configuration items, CMDB. I'm curious if you can elaborate what type of tools use for configuration items CMDB as open source today that satisfy your requirements to 
build the Syscom cloud? <coughs> so I can take first the last one, um, which <laughs> where I can't really tell you anything because um, um, I, I spoke about configuration management in my talk and we use Puppet there. Um, we, we use a lot of um, the open source Puppet ecosystem, um, but this is not a CMDB, so I cannot really tell you there something about it. Um, but, and, and the other part was about how do you deal with transactional things within stateless application. So this is something where, where you also need to adapt the architecture of your application. So you might want to um, push um, a payment for, for like someone buys something in your web shop. You want to push that out into, um, um, into an, an service that you consume. So maybe um, your application don't really, um, it, it's just talking to an API. Then the next question is, yeah, who, who is going to provide you the API? Is this something that you also need to, that you also want to deliver on top of that? And yes, you could build such a microservice architecture by also deploying things like that on top of it. It's just, the question is how will you, um, how will you design the architecture for your application that you can make a, an API call which then will only return if the transaction is finished, as an example. It's not clear to me, uh, I mean, wh where you are in this uh, journey. Uh, I understand you left the test phase, the proof of concept phase, mm -hmm. and you are in production. Uh, one question would be, when did you leave the test phase, when you really started the production? And also, how many nodes are involved in your Swisscom cloud right now, with OpenStack and so on? So we actually have multiple installation with different sizes from very few one to multiple um, to, to bigger ones. Um, when did we go into production? So um, it's the question is a little bit what kind of production? Because if you look at the different layers, you 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 always have um, like the layer you're building on top like needs to be stable for you. Um, so otherwise, um, yeah, if, if, if the ground below is constantly failing, then, um, um, then you cannot build something on top of it. What we did do was to open up our application cloud very early for developers so that, um, that even when we were not yet sure how all these things will go out, because the important thing is that they can play around with the platform, <coughs> that they can start um, developing applications on top of it, that they can start developing application, applications using these concepts and using the API to like do their CI and CD. But we just told them um, at the moment we have a best effort. And, and now we, over time, we evolved and we got more stable in our infrastructure. And um, it's like the time window is like now when, when we're starting to like really getting, um, getting workload on, on that environment where we also um, are offering, um, a, let's say, a production environment. Before, well, for us then, I mean, for us, the application cloud that we already had where people were already playing around was already a production because like people were using it and 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 it was just like yeah the the kind of SLAs that people might expect are still different um i think it's also important to to think about um to rethink the idea of SLAs within environments like these because you push a lot of things up to the application layer and the application should be able to deal with failures and um, nodes going away. In this terms, like containers, so the platform itself will 
um, will launch the containers again. And, but that's also why you want to have a scaled out application architecture. So you, so th this means that in the end you don't get an SLA on, on exactly one container. You get more an SLA um, on the platform itself for, for this on, this on the service that the platform provides to you. And the service is I'm running your applications. Any other questions? Otherwise we're done. Thanks for listening. If you have many, I'm here if you have more questions. <laughs>